In ancient Egypt, it was believed that when someone died, mummification would help them reach the afterlife. They believed that an afterlife could only exist if there was a form the ka, or soul, could repossess after death. Egyptians believed that the only way to do this was if the body was recognizable, thus led to the creation of mummies. Welcome back to the Foolish Wanderers podcast, the podcast about anything and everything. Today, we are on episode two of Spooktober, and we are talking about the creation of mummies. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, we've had spooky sound effects there, otherwise it sounds lame. But <laughs> <laughs> Make it extra spooky. Extra spooky. Yes, okay. but it's not, yeah, we're just... I mean, this episode isn't going to be like spooky or I mean, kind of scary. Sp- not scary or anything it's just i don't know i thought it was kind of interesting just you know mummy is the classic um, halloween costume right yeah it's like on the macabre side it's not like scary but it's like still like halloween theme yeah still kind of in that genre i I guess so yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) should we just get right into it yeah let's go okay so the first egyptian mummies appear in the archaeological record at approximately 3500 BC by the time of the Old Kingdom or Age of the Pyramids. So mummification was well entrenched in Egyptian society. Um, It became a mainstay during subsequent periods, reaching particular heights of sophistication during the New Kingdom, which is um, current era, and that's 1550 to 1069 BC. Mummification in ancient Egypt was typically reserved for the elite of society, such as royalty, noble families, government officials, and, of course, the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, common people were rarely mummified because the practice was expensive. So, the, um, we will get into sort of, like, the price ranges of the mummification. Okay. Yep. So, like, there's different packages they would (laughs) allow you to have. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yep. So, we'll get into that later. Sounds like modern day, too. They're like, oh, if you want, like, this fancy funeral, there's so many different ways you can be buried, like, yeah. in packages. Um, uh, the coffin is made out of ebony wood and comes in its velvet interior, and then, you know, that's sort of the high-range, luxurious ones you mm-hmm. dead body can be in, or that you could just have the pine coffin that's not finished or anything. Did you, okay, so I just came across this, like, on TikTok, surprise, surprise, but (laughs) apparently, I have to look it up where it's at, but apparently there's, like, a funeral home that was, like, specializing in, like, in the, um, like, the natural burials, you know, like, the ones where you just get, like, cremated or, like, put in the ground in, like, these natural, like, degrading, like, coffins or whatever. This funeral home had over 100 bodies in it just like in different states of decay what do you mean so like the police like came and they're like searching because like they're supposed to like bury these bodies right but like there's like over a hundred bodies of like like different rates of decomp that were on back order or no like they don't know why they're still there because they're supposed to be like buried or like cremated or whatever but like okay they're they're still there yet well some people are thinking it's like they were harvesting organs or something (gasps) okay but i mean I, what, do you, what do you mean harvested organs? That they them? killed the person and then right away, like, the fresh body, they <laughs> took all the no. organs and then they just never cleaned up? Or Let me Google it real quick. Because that, it has to be, if it's harvested organs, I'm, pr- I'm not a scientist or anything of that nature, we all know. If you listen to this podcast, we all know. <laughs> but the body still has to be kind of fresh for the yeah, organs. Like, like, yeah. You can't have somebody decomposing for 30 days and be like, well... Ginny needs a new pair of eyes. Yeah. yeah Let's no, take it from good. this 30-day decomposed body. So this, apparently what led the investigators to go to this funeral home was the, like the horrid smell. There was 115 bodies that they found oh, improperly gosh. stored. Um, this so is in they're Colorado. improperly stored, so does that, is, did, I just, did, did they never get to these bodies to fix or what? 
Um, let me see. So it's still like under investigation, so we don't know quite yet. Exa- okay. Like what's happening is still being looked into. So apparently someone tried to conceal the improper storage of the human remains on the property. Okay. Um, so they're just like, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look more into it and like come back to it. But basically someone was just like, there's a nasty smell. Like, go check it out because something's wrong. And then um, they're like, not sure why they didn't bury these people yet. Because some of these people were so far decomposed that like they Mm -hmm. couldn't identify them unless like they used DNA. So like they've been there for months and you're supposed to bury somebody within, like, a couple days if it's not embalmed, right? Okay, yeah. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so they're still looking into it, and it's, yeah. But, yeah, there's a Halloween spooky for you. That was not it's very one morbid. I w- that was not on my bingo card, for, so... Oh, that's good. It shouldn't be. <laughs> I know it shouldn't be. <laughs> okay, where the heck were yeah. we with the Egyptian mummies before? Okay, so, again... The ancient Egyptians believed that when a person died, their spiritual essence survived. So this Mm -hmm. essence went on a journey where it encountered numerous divine and demonic beings with with its ultimate destiny is to be judged by the god Osiris, Mm -hmm. who's the god of of the dead. Okay. So if found blameless, like you had a good life and you were a good person or whatever, the deceased was then allowed to live with the gods in their eternal paradise. And so that's that's your goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is to chill with the gods, whatever, doing whatever you do. Sick. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so the ancient Egyptians also mummified lots of animals, including dogs, cats, and birds. But again, remember... These are usually the rich dogs, cats, and birds. <laughs> That's fair. Right. So they also mummified food so that they would have something to eat in the afterlife. And this was known as a victual mummy. So how do you mummify food? You just I dry have, it? I'm, I think it's just like the same thing with the body. You just dry the crap out of it, I think. It's just okay, like potpourri. It's, preserve it. it's, pr- okay. it's potpourri. Okay. Interesting. Because mm-hmm. I know like they found like jars of honey and stuff too. Mm-hmm. It's still edible, technically. Don't eat it, yeah. but like <laughs> you can heat it up, right? I suppose. I don't know. I guess no, honey, like we would die. <laughs> like they say, like honey never supposedly spoils. But is it amber old honey or is that old tree resin? I forget. Tree, tree resin, yeah. Okay, thank it's you. different. Okay, it's yeah. different. Honey yep. is bee vomit, and then <laughs> amber is tree sap or yep. tree resin. Yep. Bee vomit. Ew. Yeah, delicious. We eat so many weird things if you think about it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the process now we are on the process of the mummies, the, mum- the mummification. Okay. Okay, so after death, a body begins to, to decompose. Duh. Mm-hmm. Um, regarding mummies, in order to prevent the body from decomposing, it is necessary to deprive the tissues of moisture and oxygen. So okay. the earliest Egyptians buried their dead in shallow pits in the desert. The hot, dry sand quickly removed moisture from the dead body and created a natural mummy. (laughs) However, the Egyptians discovered that if the body was first placed in a coffin, it would not be preserved. Yeah, because all the air getting to it. (laughs) Yep, all the air is getting to it, eating away. Um, This was what would necessitate mummies in ancient Egypt. Did you ever have, like, in history class in school, did you ever have, like, a section on ancient Egypt and, like, mum- mummification? <sighs> no, but I did do, you know me. I do, like, I, you know, I used to read about all sorts of, all this stuff. Uh-huh. I think we talked about the Nile and how important the Nile River is and, well, you know, okay, upper think- and lower Egypt and stuff like that. And then they were eventually un- unified. Okay. What about you? I, I think in high school we had like a, a class because I always liked the um, Egyptian chapters in our books. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in high school we went a little bit into depth of like the mummification and it was like it was a little bit shocking to me and made me a little bit queasy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. But yeah, well, but it's interesting. Hold on to your stomach. What was it? We're okay. Okay. So in order to ensure that the body was preserved, the ancient Egyptians began to use a process called mummification to produce their mummies. This involved embalming the body and then wrapping it in thin strips of linen. The mummification process took about 70 days. That's a long time. It is a long time. That's quite a commitment. <laughs> That's why it's so expensive. Yep. Um, the chief embalmer was a priest wearing a mask of Anubis. 
And Anubis was the jackal-headed god of the dead. He, so, I thought that's kind of cool, but, like, you have to wear a mask. Yeah, to represent them, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he was closely asso associated with mummification and embalming, hence priests wore a mask of Anubis. I would kind of get annoyed after a while wearing, like, this <laughs> big dog, like, dog mask. Would it, like, cover their face, or is it just, like, a head piece? It's like a little hat. Okay. I mean... Mm -hmm. What is it made out of? Is it clay? Um, I have no idea. I saw a picture of it. It kind of looked like it was clay. Okay. Because I think, like, yeah, I think pictures of masks and stuff, it seems like clay or some sort of, like, hard mm -hmm. um, substance. Like, that would be, yeah, probably annoying. <laughs> probably annoying after a while. It keeps falling off. Yeah. Hits the body. Falls off, hits the body oh. on the table, and you're like, <laughs> oh, <no>. turn it. <laughs> Take it, come back. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Okay, so the first step in the Egyptian mummification process was washing the body with water from the Nile River, which was sacred because it helped their crops grow. Yeah. So you just give it a sponge bath. <laughs> okay, next. A hooked instrument was used to remove the brain through the nose of the mummies. Um, the brain was not considered to be important and was thrown away. Isn't that fascinating that, like, We've grown so much in our medical knowledge that, like, now it's, like, the brain is, like... The computer. <laughs> yeah, like, you need that. It's just oh, yeah. funny that, like, they're just like, oh, it's the heart that's the most important. But your brain, yeah. what's this giant organ? I don't know. Just yeah, you it. Don't, yeah, you don't need that in your afterlife at all. Yeah, no. no. So it's just, like, a zombie. So all these mummies in these, um, these... <laughs> like, these monster movies, that's why they're moaning and they don't really know what to do. They can't speak, like, comprehensively because they don't have a brain. Yeah. Yep, and it's like the afterlife, just all the rich, they don't have, yeah. They're just r walking into walls. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so next, a cut was made on the left side of the abdomen and the internal organs, your intestines, your liver, your lungs, and your stomach were removed. The heart of the mummies, which the ancient Egyptians believed to be the center of emotion and intelligence was left in the body for use in the next life. And then they would rinse your insides with wine and spices. <laughs> with your insides? Yeah, oh. they would just like, because you have a cut open, right? Uh -huh. And they would just be oh. like, dump like <laughs> like a big handle of crappy wine in you and then they'd put some pumpkin spice or whatever <laughs> kind of spice in there. They'd be like, yep. Oh, yep, my burial is going to be pumpkin spice. Yeah, yours is going to be pumpkin spice. Yep. Put some oregano in there, paprika. Smells delicious. <laughs> you smell. The <laughs> okay, can you just imagine you're in the afterlife as a mummy? Okay. And you don't have a brain. Mm -hmm. So you can't speak and you can't really do anything. You're just kind of like a zombie. But mm -hmm. then you smell like wine and spices. That's kind of nice. Yeah, just like your insides smell of. <laughs> At least I smell nice. Yeah, you smell nice. <laughs> Okay, so after that, um, each organ that, that, that was removed, um, they're put into canopic jars to be protected by one of the four sons of Horus. So Horus is the little man-hawk god, right? Okay, just, yeah. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows about that one, I think, right? Maybe not, but yeah, there's like, um, let me look up like what exactly he's the god of. I think he's kind of like equivalent to Thor or something. Maybe. Okay. Because Osiris yeah, so is their Zeus or like Odin. And then I think mm -hmm. Horus is like their Thor type figure. Let's see. So Horus is the god of kingship, healing, protection, and the sun and sky. Ooh. So. Falcon? He's a falcon. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's kind of close. Yeah. 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 I've seen some of these jars in museums before. And again, it's like, it's weird to think that like somebody's organs were put in them. Like. I don't know, like sitting in a museum. Just chilling. They're Just all chilling. dirt and, you know, I don't, well, are they dirt and dust? They're dirt and dust. Uh, Me? I don't really want to open one, so. I bet it's just dirt and dust. So, <laughs> okay. so yeah, so they have like these four jars. They just chill by your body, in the sar by the sarcophagus. I think they go in there maybe too. I think they go in maybe. In the sarcophagus. Um, but the jackal, the jackal jar will house your stomach. The baboon jar will house your lung. The human one, randomly, is going to have your liver. <laughs> and then the falcon jar has your intestines. Yeah. Yep. I don't know why, but this is, like, the part that just, like... I think this is, like, in school, what would give me, like, a like a queasy feeling. Just really? To, yeah, I don't know why. Because, like, now it's not as, like, shocking to me. Mm -hmm. But, like, especially when I first started learning about it, it's like, oh, why? Because it's, it's something that we don't do. 
here in the U.S. anyways. Like, it's just, like, once you're embalmed, it's, like, you're all together, basically. But, like, right. this is so different than what we're used to. <laughs> right. It's just, I don't know, it's just interesting and it's weird. But... It's also weird because, like, does those do those things in the jars go back into you when you're in the afterlife? Or do you just kind of have to carry them around or, like, consume them when you wake up in the afterlife? That's a good question, yeah. It's very weird to me. I don't know. Because you don't have your brain. <laughs> i mean yeah because like, like yeah i don't know that's like they figured out that like, this is the best way to keep it from like your body from like decomposing further if they could like separate pieces to like make sure like they stayed which is smart like this is yeah, yeah. Like, very we're very intelligent people oh yeah yeah okay moving on okay so after the priests have removed your organs and they cover the body inside and out with their little wine and stuff and now they're going to cover like you with natron what is natron so natron is a naturally occurring salt from the egyptians desert that absorbs moisture and fat okay so it's like salt it's like a natural like salt deposit that they have found okay cool so they had to replace this every couple weeks on the body and this portion lasted about 40 days this was like oh, the majority goodness. of the, the mummification process was just your dead body chilling on a table covered in um, salt. In salt, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I've seen, like, experiments, like, where they try to um, take the moisture out of, like, a pumpkin with salt. And it just, it takes so long. And there's so much moisture. It, Yeah, it takes it forever. It works, but it takes forever. Yeah, it works, but <laughs> you're... <laughs> You're just covered in... It's kind of oh, like a spa. Salt. Like, look at this little picture I've got on the slide. His body's <laughs> just kind of chilling on this table. And the guy's mm -hmm. just covering him, like, in head to toe in the salt. Like, just burying him in salt. It's... I think some people from, it's, you know, Beverly Hills or whatever would pay a lot of money <laughs> to do this. To be dehydrated by salt. <laughs> yes. I think they okay. would. I mean, the people have, like, they do, like, the salt caves, right? Like, that's like, got energy or something in it, or I don't know what. But, salt caves? Yeah, like, the I've salt of, caves. I don't know if I've heard of that. I've heard of, like, the Himalayan salt lamps, where it's supposed mm -hmm. to have, like... So it's uh, that. Ions. Okay. So it's those, but they're in bricks, and it's just a wall of it. Huh. And you can pay money to go sit in the room. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which I do it, I just don't want to pay <laughs> for it. Like, I try it. <laughs> I'm sponsor open to us, it. we'll go try it. Yeah, sponsor us, and we'll go try it. <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm open to try it. I just don't want to pay for it. Yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after your body has been, you know, salt or whatever has been on you for 40 days, then the body was packed with sawdust and rags and all, like, your little open cuts and whatever is sealed with wax. Oh, they still do that, though. They, they still, still do the wax. wax, like, in the nostrils, right? Like, there's, to make your nostrils look full if you have an open casket, don't they, like, stick, like, little, like, tampon-looking things <laughs> Up your nostrils that are wax, just like stick a wax, whatever. I don't, I don't know about that one, but I've seen like if you want like different scars and stuff filled in, they'll fill that in with wax. Mm -hmm. Um, and like your eyes, like nowadays, they'll have like little things, like little caps with that make sure your eyes don't open up. I thought they sewed that shut. I think that you can do either one. Like they sew like your mouth shut, and then mm -hmm. there's like also like little plastic things they can put on your eyes to like they have like little hooks. Um, so your like lids um, kind of like they don't open up again because they're stuck on the hooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's there's different ways you can do it, but yeah, <laughs> you know it's interesting. What? I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. So. They talk about they talk about <laughs> the mortician stuff. Um, so the one I listen to a lot called Morbid Co Podcast. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is a mortician, or she was. So like she has like a lot of knowledge of um, just different. Uh, morbid facts of like embalming or different things in the past and stuff that people used to do so it's interesting one's a they're, they're sisters uh one's a hairstylist and then one was a mor mortuary they probably yeah. worked with each other no they didn't but <laughs> really there's a they, but usually like you get a hairstylist to do like the to do the bodies hair do they yeah Okay, because I also follow a lady on um, on TikTok, and she talks. She she runs like a funeral home with her dad, mm -hmm. and she does all like the embalming and everything, and she does like their makeup and hair. Oh, she so, does it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it depends on the um like the funeral the home place. Yeah, I think it yep. depends. Okay. Yeah. All right. So next, back to the mummification. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so next, it was time to wrap the mummy. So wrapping the mummy was symbolic in many ways. Um, as the arms and legs were wrapped, 
the priest read spells to protect and reawaken them in the afterlife. And then the body was wrapped in linen bandages. About 20 layers were used, and this took 15 to 20 days. Oh, goodness. This whole, this is like the last portion part, because, you know, you're doing all these, you're doing wrapping, and the priest got to do, like, his prayers and spells on you to protect the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just getting you ready to ship you out the door. So... <laughs> Um, the priest then tucked amulet. So this is the same sort of portion, the same portion. So okay. 15 to 20 days. This is when this is happening. So the priest tucked amulets into the mummy's wrappings. So an amulet is an object that people believe will protect the person who carries it. So the ancient Egyptians believed the amulets would ensure safe passage and existence in the afterlife. So for example, King Tut had over 140 amulets scattered through his wrappings but remember king tut's like a special case because he was a pharaoh mm -hmm. and he's like one of the most like had the most treasures or like wealth in his um afterlife little tomb that they found because yeah, like at this point grave robbery was huge and so Rampant. this is one of the ones yeah. that was like actually preserved so he actually had like all of his stuff still so like that's why we know so much about um like their history and like through like all this the treasure he had in there is because like his tomb wasn't found so and he yeah, had like cool. a bunch of booby traps too right yeah <laughs> they all did yeah. Mm. yeah okay so next so the ancient egyptians would include a heart scarab beetle that would be like on your pectoral area okay. with the wrapping of the mummy um, they would also put a mask over the wrapped mummy's face called a death mask. Mm -hmm. And they, they did this because they were concerned that the mummy's spirit wouldn't recognize their body because the face was covered with wrappings. Oh. So oh. this death mask is, um, the part, like the, like the part that, um, like King Tut that you see mm -hmm. where the, it's the, like, um, iconic gold mask, right? Okay. Sure. It's yeah. that. They, okay. Like if you were poorer, you would also you could al they'd also do like portraitures of you, so like okay. a painting of you. They'd put mm -hmm. over like that part of it, so you would just be chill. So the mummy's just chilling there, like wrapped up, and then there's just like a selfie portrait of you <laughs> on the face. Okay. okay, I mean it works. Yep, it works because you gotta <laughs> somehow. I guess you won't be able to recognize your face or something. Okay, so then the body, the bandaged body, was placed in a shroud. And then that was secured with linen, linen, linen strips. That's a hard word to say. Linen, linen strips. Linen. Linen. Okay. okay, so then they got you all set up and you got your little death mask on and you're all ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. And then they do the opening of the mouth ceremony, <laughs> which is um, where the priest restored the mummy's five senses and the mummy, because the mummy would need their senses in the afterlife. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. It was like a, and then you're kind of done. And then the mummy would be inter, like they'd be, you'd be put into your little coffin, which could take different, like several different shapes. Um, the one that we're most associated with, and we see that the most popular one is called an anthropoid coffin, which means it's shaped like the human body, so wide at the shoulders and then narrowing mm -hmm. at the base, right? right? Towards the and, feet, yeah. yeah. But like other types of coffins, earlier ones. They don't really have, I mean, they don't really have names per se, but each um, city in e ancient Egypt would have their own sort of type of coffin that was associated with the city or whatever. Oh, that's and cool. And older ones were more rectangular, just like a box. And then as we got on, they became the anthropoid coffins. Oh, huh, that's cool, actually. And then you see how the little anthropoid coffin has all sorts of little hieroglyphics and you know paintings all over the place and then you got a mm -hmm. little portrait of your face around the face of the coffin and that's your sarcophagus coffin thing <laughs> okay so now we're gonna get into the budget like the different options for okay. the, the mummification the packages yes okay. thank you Katrina. <laughs> the packages of mummification if you were not able to afford the one we just talked about okay okay so this is sort of the middle class package. Okay. So one, they would fill the belly with cedar wood oil um, using a syringe by the breech, which is then plugged to stop the drench from returning back. Uh, so that would dissolve, like, dissolve the bowels and interior organs. Oh, that sounds horrid. Yep. 
This is middle class package. Um, oh, so the breach, you're talking about like your rear end, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. I think I'm talking about your a-hole. <laughs> okay, good to know. Yep. It's like that a-hole's plugged and yep, and you got <laughs> cedar oil in there and it's gonna dissolve all the stuff. Oh. At least you smell good, because cedar, I love the smell of cedar oil. I, I mean, for like a day, and then after that, not so much. You don't want it just in your large well, intestines? Well, I mean, like, once it starts dissolving your bowels, like... Do you think that probably... stinks? And do you think oh. they cover it up with just... <laughs> I, <think> so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, wouldn't it? I feel like anything decaying is gonna smell not great, right? Yeah, spices. Put spices in there. Spice. <laughs> okay, so then... The se- so then after the second step, so then after the appointed number of days um, with the nitron treatment, so they put the, you, you're still getting the salt, right? Okay, yeah. You're still going to do the salt. I don't think you're going to do the salt for 40 days. That's okay. like the, other, <laughs> the upper class. Okay. So um, the, then the cedar oil is left out of the corpse. So they unplug the, you know, your the breech. Um, <laughs> and then... Okay. And they let it out, and the corpse is left as the skin and the bones. Oh, that's so morbid. Okay. Yep. And then you return to your family. Oh, that's it? Like, yep. And then the family just will bury. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's it. But you, you still remember, you're still, um, you're still doing the salt treatment, right? So you're still getting, sure. you're still doing the nitron um, treatment. Okay. But you yeah. just have to wrap them yourself. Or like bury yeah. them yourself. Okay. Yeah. You gotta <laughs> do the whole thing for yeah yourself. Okay, so now you're doing the lower, like the for the poor. This is the okay. poor one. Mm-hmm. Um, the poor package. Um, so they would cleanse out the belly with a purge. Then they would cl- keep the body for 70 days of the nitron treatment. And then they would just return your the corpse to the family. So isn't that like almost the same thing as the less costly option? Like middle class option? Oh, because like, I guess you still have your organs at that point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So you're just like... You just don't have okay, so you're basically dried out, but like you still have all your organs intact. Yeah, it's just like throw salt on Katrina for 70 days <laughs> oh. and then boom, she's done. Okay, cool, thank you. I, I mean, I probably shouldn't have used it as an example, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's uh, okay, you're not dying for a while, so okay, well, good we to know, thank that. you. No, but yeah, it's just kind of like your beef jerky. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what it is, but it's 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 weird to say it like. It feels wrong to say it that way. Yeah, it is because it's a human, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, so those were the packages. What package are you getting, Katrina? Um, honestly, I think the poor one sounds probably the, <laughs> the best. Because I get to keep my brain. I get to keep all my organs. Yeah, you do. So, I mean, I'm picking that one. Isn't that funny, though? That's like in the, if okay, in their afterlife, mm-hmm. the poor would have be, would have the most, they'd be the most capable if like it worked like the way that we think it would work yeah yeah, yeah. it's because the other guys would be missing wouldn't have any organs <laughs> yeah they'd be missing brains and missing organs and uh-huh. yep um so and then obviously also remember take into account that the level of sarcophagus is oh, sarcophagi yeah. or whatever yeah like the adornment of these bodies mm-hmm. are different from each yeah, I suppose package. So. so what would happen then, like, for the poor? Would you just, like, be buried be directly linen. in the sand? Just be linen and put in the ground, basically? I think so. Okay. I mean, that's not, like, the worst thing. <laughs> there might be, like, a really, like, crappy um, papyrus or papyrus, like, mm-hmm. squiggle, por- like, hand-drawing portrait of you. Okay. I just imagine, like, a like a crappy, like, a six-year-old drew, like, your face. Hey. And then just, like, put it on there. Oh, man. Well, meh, but I still have my face, so. Yeah, you still have your face. I'll be fine. Mm-hmm, you'll be fine. Okay, so now we move on to, um, this is a stuff that would happen, like, in the, like, once you've, you're dead. This is, like, the mystical stuff that happens, okay? Okay. okay. So, once you have your body or your spirit has left the plane, the realm, like, the human realm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're talking about the weighing of the heart. So, the ancient Egyptians believed their heart would be weighed on the scales against the feather of the goddess Maat. And then Maat represented the idea of order, which in this context means what is right. Okay, yeah. So then you would, so then your heart is weighed against Maat's feather, okay? 
So then if your if your heart weighs more than Mott, that is bad. And if, mm-hmm. you know, it weighs less, that is or even, I think it's even, it's good. Okay. So the person that's doing the weighing is Anubis. And Anubis, we've talked about him. He's the jackal dude. He's the god of embalming. And he's like your guide to the underworld. He's your tourist guide. Okay. Okay. The friendly tourist guide. I don't think he's friendly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he's doing the weighing of you. So then... I mean, that's got to be really trippy to see. Like, you're just kind of sta- chilling there, standing, and mm-hmm. then your heart is being weighed with a feather. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also, behind, uh, like, Anubis is this freaky thing called, I think it's Am- Amit, who is called okay. the Devourer. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, Amit is just chilling in there in the corner, and Amit is the demon, it's a- is a demon, and it has the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion, and the bottom, so the butt in the little legs of a hippopotamus. Interesting. So, okay. Yep. So do you see how the um, Amit is, like, depicted? Like, it's got long front legs and then short little stubby hippopotamus ass. How does it walk? <laughs> <laughs> how does it walk? Well, the first thing I, like, question, like, because, okay, so, in the part that's supposed to be the lion part, it has spots and stripes, like a tiger and, like, a leopard. Maybe so she little... got her hair done. Okay. I don't know. Okay, cool. I think she got um, her hair done. I really don't know. But, yeah, it's, it doesn't look like it'd be able to walk very smoothly. No, you could just outrun it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> unless unless you're swimming, because sw- hippos are insanely good swimmers. Yeah, but I... <laughs> It's like the little legs. Um, <laughs> it's like got a crocodile head, so yeah, it's kind of it's freaky. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so um, it's just like chilling there in the corner with her little stubby legs, and then if someone's heart again is heavier than Mott's feather, um, Amit would then devour the heart. She would make her way up there, making her way downtown, walking <laughs> slow. <laughs> <laughs> so she makes her way to the scale somehow, and then she eats the heart. And then when Amit devours the heart, the person isn't sent to, like, hell or anything. Like, they're not going to go to be punished. You just vanish. Oh. You just, poof, you're gone. Oh, Don't know where. Weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if you're, you know, again, if then, if the you know, your heart weighs the same amount of the feather or it's lighter, you're going to go to chill with Osiris and eat your mummified food that they made for you in your... <laughs> Can you imagine that? If you... Like, would they do options for you? Like, a food? So you wouldn't be eating? It's like a menu to figure yeah. it out. So otherwise, if you just do the one meal, you're just going to be eating that meal. I mean, I assume, like, if you looked at, like, King Tut's, there's, like, baskets of food. Yeah. And, like, there's so many options. So I feel He's, like I just put, like, a lot everything of options. in there. Yeah. He had a lot of options. He had a lot of options. Mm-hmm. And then, this is a dark one. You might want to... F- I People, listeners, might want to fact check this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right... If you were royalty, mm-hmm. you had like servants slash slaves, correct? Yep. They'd kill a bunch of them too and then bring them into the tomb with you so you'd have your servants slash slaves in your afterlife too. Yeah, yeah, and they did that with pets too. <gasps> they did that with Especially horses cats. too. Yeah, yeah, they did that. Like you'd have a boat. I'm pretty sure King Tot had like a boat with him and. Mm-hmm. Those little chariots and whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you'd have to pack for a long trip. Like, you were moving. Yeah, that's, yeah, this is like your life after mm-hmm. on Earth here. Like, so you need everything. Yeah. It makes oh, me yeah. wonder, too, like, if, like, if they're in the afterlife right now, do they still have their stuff? Or is it, like, scattered around because it's in different museums and, like, everywhere? <laughs> because, like, if you think, because, like, grave robbers, we don't know where that stuff went. Mm-hmm. So it's just, like, scattered everywhere. And now you're just kind of sitting in the afterlife, like, hey, is that, like, where my socks go when they escape in the dryer? My socks are in <laughs> Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts, at the Art Institute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's a great that's a art dark, that's, that's a dark spot. That's a dark thought, Katrina. <laughs> it is, but it, it's, like, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, that would suck. Okay, so finally, the Ma, which would, which the Ba would be reunited with the physical mummy. So the Ba represented the personality of the deceased, and in order for the mummy to survive the afterlife, it had to be reunited with the Ba every night. And the Ba is kind of like looks like like a little parrot type owl, like a- <laughs> eagle thing. 
With a human head. Uh-huh. Yep. So, is this not, like, their spirit, then? This is, like, just, like, their personality traits? Yeah. It's just your form? personality. I think. In- interesting. Okay, so, like, your soul had to re-find your body. Every night. But every... Uh-huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, I thought... I never knew that. I didn't either. I haven't heard that part before. I didn't either. I've heard about, like, the weighing of the heart and, like... Mm-hmm. And like, Amit doing this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yep. yeah, I had no idea. So, mm-hmm. So, the sources for this episode were mylearning.org, livescience.com, Milwaukee Public Museum, and History on the Net. Ooh, nice. It was interesting. Like, there's some things definitely, like, you don't learn in, at least I didn't learn in public school. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's some stuff that you do, but, like, it, they don't ever get to, like, in-depth with this stuff, but it's interesting. The public school is, like... Help King Tut find his way out of the maze. <laughs> oh, no. That's what they give you. Cross, oh. there's like, ancient Egyptian crossword puzzle. The first word <laughs> you have to find is papyrus. <laughs> and it's like the definition that there's like next to it. It's like, papyrus is a paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like public school for you. Mm-hmm. In America. Yep. yep. Midwest oh, America. God. Yep, yep. Did we want to talk about anything else before like, we sign off? I don't know. I don't have... Oh, I have one for you. It's a TikTok trend. Oh, no. <laughs> People are asking, like, their, the women are asking their significant other if they have a boyfriend, how many times a week do they think about the Roman Empire? I've heard of this, yes. Like, the ancient Roman Empire. Uh-huh. And they were surprised to hear that the men think about it a few times a week. Yeah, a lot of people do. Do you think about the Roman Empire? Yes. <laughs> do you? Like, actually? I was like, what's the issue? I do. Well, I do because I don't think about it. I think probably how, like, I guess these TikTok men do where they I probably think about the gladiatorial elements okay. and or, like, the war elements. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about, like, architecture and art because, okay. you know, I have a whatever. My, you know... <laughs> minor in art history whatever whatever so like i'm more interested in those aspects so i think about it quite a bit okay during like the week but interesting it's more i'm thinking more of like the architectural and you know famous sculptures art you know that's true but yeah i think about it a lot but i was kind of shocked that the i guess that i don't know that it's being the light is being shown on that uh, other people i guess don't think about it once a week at least or maybe it crosses their mind I thought I mean, that was kind of shot. I was like, what? Did you ask Mr. Kendra if he thought mm-hmm. about it? What did he say? He said, and I quote, I think more about trees. <laughs> so, I that's what that he answer. thinks about. So, <laughs> I think more about trees. I love his answers. That's fantastic. Yep. So, oh. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I saw that trend, I think it was like a couple weeks ago now. I... I don't think I've thought about the Roman Empire unless it's, like, in a movie or, like, brought up in other conversation or, like, other topics, but I don't, like, outwardly think of it. Really? I don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That, I like your guys' dynamic, though. Any? <laughs> yeah, do you think about any, like, ancient culture at all? Like, any ancient civilization? Do you think? Um, I'm trying to think. Because, like, I guess it depends on, like, what I'm thinking, like, learning about, like, that week mm-hmm. or whatever. Because, like, if I do research, so, like, I'm doing different research for different podcasts, I learn a lot about, like, you know, like, 1800s, like, in Europe or, like, you know, like old, basically old European stuff. Okay, but that aspect, when you're thinking of that, you never, because, remember, ancient Rome, <laughs> they conquered up into, like, England. So, okay. a lot of, like... Like that's aspects are ha- they have you know you don't ever, that you don't ever think like oh so then they influenced these people because they were here so this influences this that doesn't like okay no that's not my brain I okay. <laughs> I do that <laughs> yeah so like you're much more the history person though I'm like I like history mm-hmm. like the weird history but I don't like piece it together like some people are so like you are so like easily you can piece it together in your brain but my brain goes you know ooh that's cool looking. And I need visual, like, aids got it, to got learn. It. <laughs> All right, got it. Like, or, like, macabre details. Um, the macabre details are fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of fun. But, yeah. No, I can't say I've thought about the Roman Empire. Oh unless God. it's, like, <laughs> through TikTok. 
<laughs> no. Okay, because it's okay, but like it's interesting because when I was for like a two month period or three month mm-hmm. period, I was very obsessed with Paris architecture, Ooh. like the civil engineering of Paris, mm-hmm. and the ancient Romans took over Paris like they were there. And they created, like, a fort area. And they did the same with, like, London. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I thought that's kind of cool. So, like, two of the main cities, all the main cities in (laughs) Europe, are, like, influenced by the Roman Empire. I mean, that is interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, like, my brain doesn't, like, think, like, comprehend that as well. It takes time to soak in. Like, there are Roman structures in London and in Paris. Like, remains. You know, it's not like it's gonna be, like, the Colosseum or anything, but it was, like, no, but like ancient stones and brickwork and, like... Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of huh. cool. It is cool. But, yeah, I was just... that was I was shocked that... <laughs> I think more about trees. <laughs> I think more about... Oh, yeah. That's your country's answer. I think more about trees. Oh, anything. I love it. Yeah. All right, Wanderers, thank you so much for joining us for another Foolish Wanderers podcast. We hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to email us at fwplisteners at gmail.com. And as always, new episodes of the FWP are released to wherever you get your podcasts from, including this place that you're listening to right now. All right, Wanderers, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time.